this is a blender tutorial for my basketball kit 3D model available on Etsy and clothingmockups.com. So I'll leave a link in the description for the model. The first thing we're going to do is download that file. Then if you don't own Blender, we're going to go over to blender.org and download the file. Blender is a free 3D software program available to everyone on Windows and Mac. So first thing we're going to do is open up Blender once it's downloaded. Then we are going to drag and drop the basketball file uh, .blend into the program. We're going to open it. And when we open it, we're going to have this screen. And the first thing we're going to look at is the timeline at the bottom here, which turns the 3D model. This is good for taking single images um, at any angle. And we'll look into that a little bit later. You can also preview an animation by pressing the play button here. I'm just going to drag that back across. We're also going to look at what this file comes with. So it comes with two 3D models, which is the basketball um, standing pose, as you see here. I'm just going to make that invisible. And then I'm going to show you the running pose. It's the same model, just two different poses. So when you update the, the graphics or the textures for this 3D model, it will update it on both of them. So the first one I'm going to do is looking into how to change the graphics. I'm going to go to UV editing at the top here and click on that. As you can see, it has this, this preloaded uh, texture on the 3D model. To change this, we're going to go to Photoshop. You can also use Photopea or Photop, which is a uh, basically a free version of Photoshop. So we can open Photoshop. We're also going to go into the files we downloaded and put in the, the PNG uh, texture. So just as a quick, a quick example, I am going to find a vector logo and I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to place it, just, uh, transform it to make it a bit smaller, and I'm going to export this as a quick PNG. So I'm just going to name this USA here and then save it in the same folder. There are two different textures for this file. You have this preloaded one and you also have this white one. They're both the same, but the white one is a blank canvas so you can add any design you want on here. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail when it comes to adding um, textures or, or Photoshop. Um, hopefully you're comfortable with using that yourself. Um, but in any case, the only thing that changes the model are the white pieces here. The um, checkered background has no, uh, has, has no, uh, like, doesn't change the model whatsoever. So I'm just going to save this one as, uh, sorry, export it as a quick PNG and do the same again. Keep them in the same folder. I'm going to hop back over to uh, Blender. So to import this texture, we're going to go to the file, uh, the folder icon in UV editing, and I'm just going to open the file. So it's updated here, but to update it on the 3D model, we're going to have to go back over to Layout, click on the UV model, make sure we have the Materials tab selected here, make sure that we have Basketball Red, and we're going to uh, go down to base color, this little arrow here, click on this icon, and we're just going to press this. And there it is, updated. We do the same on the uh, the, the other texture uh, file as well. I'm going to quickly show you how to import that as well. It's the same process. We're going to go back to UV editing, uh, the folder icon, and we're going to find the file, open the image, just going to press tab to see that. I'm going to quickly go back over to layout and just do the same again just to make sure that it works. So that is just the regular one and that's the one with the logo. Cool. So it's as simple as that. We're also going to check that it has loaded up on the other pose, which it has. That's perfect. So let's check around here. Wonderful. So we are going to look into how we can render the 3D model. 
So when we're rendering an image or an animation, it's important that we only re render one model at a time. Clicking this, um, this disables, this icon disables the render when we render it. So we're going to go to render, render image. It'll just take a second to load. And there we have it, a rendered image. To save this, we go to image, save as, and I'm going to save it as render one, and I'm going to save it in the same folder. If we want, we can also change the angle and do the same again. Render, render image. There we are. Cool. Now we're going to look into rendering an animation. So I'm just going to switch this out to the running pose. And to render this, we're going to quickly check the output settings. We're going to make sure that we save it in a file that we can find it. It automatically saves it in the temporary file, which is fine on a PC, but it's sometimes a little bit difficult to find on a Mac. So I'm just going to save it in the same folder with the other images. Cool. Render animation one. Accept. And to do this, we have to go to render and render animation. As you can see from the bottom here, we have 250 frames. This means that Blender is going to have to render 250 individual frames for this to for this to be finished. It's going to take a little bit of time to do. I'm going to press render animation and I'll get back to you with the final result. So this is the result. It's a five second long uh, 360 degree um, rotation animation. So depending on how fast or slow your computer is, it'll take roughly about 20 minutes to do this, uh, this animation. Right now we're going to look into, um, we're going to look into changing the lighting. So to change the lighting, if we want to, we go back to layout, which we're in. And as you can see here, we have the key light, which is the main light. And we're going to click on this lighting uh, icon here. And we're going to change the power from 78 to 200. As you can see, it hasn't really changed anything at all. And it's because we're in the viewport shader we want to go to the render shader. So if we click on this icon here, we'll have a real time update every time we change this. So I'm going to go crazy and go a thousand and I'm going to go low to 10. So you can see playing around with these settings will really give you a, like a dramatic look or a, or like mood lighting. You can play around with the other secondary lighting as well. If you want, if you want to, you can also turn them off to see if that has a better look for what you want. And if you're going to render it, just make sure that you click the camera icon so it's not rendered into the final image or animation that you're doing. Cool. Uh, we're also going to look at how we can change the color of the background. So to change the color of the background, we click on the background, make sure it's highlighted here, go to materials, and we're going to go to base color and change it here. You can see it's quite, um, it's quite, it's it's not like a strong color, and it's because we have emission on. So if we go down here, let's see, to materials. Sorry, this is a new version of Blender that I'm still getting used to. Emission. As you can see, it's on white. If we change it to black, it will make it a solid color. So change it to blue, that will render as blue. You get the idea. To change the camera, to change the camera size and the placement, we can go to this icon here, the output setting, and I'm going to make it the same size as a A4 piece of paper. So 2480 by 3508. To zoom in with the camera, we press M and we go to view and we just lock the 3D camera to the cursor. Press N again to take that away and we can use this icon to zoom in and out. 
obviously the higher the resolution, the longer it's going to take to um, render, but the better the quality. Um, I'm also just going to flip these around. Let's see, so 3508 by 2480. I'm going to zoom back out. As you can see, we have the shadow here. If we, it's fine with the shadow, but if you want to remove it, then what we can do is just click the background, press uh, G, and that grabs the background. If we want to, we press Y, and we can move back and forth until the shadow is not visible in our camera view. To scale it up, we press S, and then drag. I'm just going to grab it and move it back a little bit more so it's not visible. Perfect. If we want to, we can also make this a little bit more, a little bit brighter. So we go to the emission color. We can just pull this up to make it a little bit more bright on the background. If we want to move the model, we can just grab the model by clicking on it and press G. We can also press X to move it from side to side. I'm going to press X here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the second model. I'm going to grab that, and press X again. No, <laughs> just pressing X without pressing G deletes the model. You don't want to do that. If you do do that though, you can just press Command and C or Control, Command and Z or Control and Z to bring it back. I'm going to press G first, then X, and then move it to the side. If you press G and X, it holds it to the to the X axis, which means that it's um, in line with the second model. Now, if we go back to the timeline, you can see both models also turn at the same time. So this is also something that you can do, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments and I'll try and get back to you in the future as soon as possible. Um, if you like this video, consider subscribing, and uh, if it's been helpful, it'd be really nice if you can give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!